Okay. Um, welcome back. Or maybe I should say welcome back to me. Um, I have moved since the last videos went up. And I am now in Colorado. And getting settled and doing some other stuff is just taking up my time. I don't have a lot of time when there's nobody else around. So, here we go. This is my kind of old, kind of new project. Um, I'm making a quilt, or at least a quilt top at this point. Um, this is the pattern. I found this on Pinterest. It's one of the few wintry slash Christmassy patterns I actually like. Cardinals are my favorite bird. And there was plenty of red fabrics, Christmassy type fabrics, and enough other stuff. So let me bring it a little closer so you can see. And this is entirely pieced by hand as I do not have a sewing machine at this time. <laughs> but I like doing it that way anyway. Um, as I said, I got this pattern off of Pinterest. And what I did is I used graph paper and created my own pattern pieces. Um, this one is going to be a small quilt. It's going to have 18 squares. Uh, be kind of like a twin size. And uh, it's basically squares. There are triangles, which are not too bad to do. And the one piece that is not uh, pieced is the beak, which is... The original pattern looked like it was pieced, but I opted to just do uh, an applique. That was a little easier for me. So my first step was to cut out all my pieces to figure out how many pieces of each I needed for what I wanted. And I cut out each piece. Um, and I used a uh, the, the rolling cutters. Um, I can't think of what they're called right now. Oh, well, I've slept since then. Anyway, that's the pattern. As I said, I, I laid it out on, drew it out on graph paper um, because there was not a, a, a pattern available to download or anything. Um, and I got it off Pinterest. I don't even remember exactly what pin. I don't know that I saved it. Um, anyway, so what I did was I cut out each piece all my pieces and then I would create stacks of pieces um, of all the solid pieces all of the triangles and then I would just do a stitch up and through and tie it off just to hold them together for each square okay as I went to each square of course I took that apart and then I would have uh, individual pieces, like so. And I would just have, you know, like all the red ones together, all the green ones together, and so forth. My next step, just to make it easier, because I don't like doing uh, off-grain stitching, I went ahead and did all of the, the two triangle pieces first. And I did that all the way through. So I did all the red and whites, all the green and whites, um, and got those all done. Next, what I'm doing is sewing together in strips. And what I do is I'll lay this out. Let me show you here. Um, this is probably... I lay them out, we'll just pretend that's one. I lay them out on here so that they're all right side up for whatever the pattern is. And then I'll take and sew, okay, these two got sewn. The next one, okay, that's this one. And then a, a plain one, so it doesn't matter which direction it goes. And then I'll sew that and so on and so forth. And then I'll have... Um, all of the strips that make up one block. So here's 
a, a batch of strips and actually it starts at the bottom so what I'll do is to lay these out to where they're in order of how the pattern goes like so and then I can just flop this over pick these two pieces up and sew this strip when that one's done it'll get laid back down and pretend those are sewn together and then this one will get flipped and continue on so I make sure I keep them in the right order so far I've only had one mess up um, where I wasn't paying attention and I sewed one of the triangular uh, whitish colors whitish triangles upside down uh, wrong side out basically um, so that's the only mistake I've made so far and at this point I have all the triangles done I have about six actual squares sewn together um, and this is a nice easy thing to take along um, when I'm going to not be at home I mean it's easy to do sitting at home um, but I've been taking it when I go do laundry our apartments have a, a laundry room and you know it's 40 minutes to wash and 45 minutes to dry. Um, so I just, and it's warmer in there than it is the little community room. Um, so I'll sit in there. There's one chair. It's just a very little hallway type room. It's very long and narrow. And so I just sit at the back end out of everybody's way. There's not usually anybody else in there, sometimes one person, but a lot of people do their stuff and go back to their apartment. I don't know. I just don't. Um, so I'll sit in there and I'll work on this. So that's what I'm doing with this. Um, I've got a variety of greens that I'm using. You can tell I've got dark greens and kind of medium greens. Um, I've even got some that have holly leaves and gold on them. Um, like I said, I used Christmas fabrics if they weren't like Santa Clauses on them or something. But generally, it's just reds and greens. And then this background, I don't know if you can tell. There we go. It's a white with a gray flower on it, which I felt kind of made it look like it was snow. Um, there's a lot of snow outside right now. It's Colorado. Uh, it's like two degrees <laughs> and uh it's okay i'm not used to it i haven't been in snow for 40 years but uh i'm getting used to it and it's beautiful um so this is my my on the go project something i can take and, and throw in a little ziploc baggie with some needle and thread and a little pair of shears and i'm ready to go um, pretty much that's it. Uh, the backing is going to be, I have, um, dark green. I'm hoping there's enough there to do. Um, I also want to cut the sashing out of that. So if I don't do anything else, I'll definitely do the sashing and the border, uh, trim, the, uh, binding. Um, and I can do the back and something else if I don't have enough of the dark green, but I think I have enough to do all that I want. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, I'm repainting the uh, nativity scene. This is a nativity scene from my childhood. And uh, this set is actually from the 1960s. And it uh, it's made out of plaster of Paris. And they were just plain. Um, I've got one thing I can show you. If you look on this king, there we go. this little piece here that I've not done anything with is supposed to look like fur. 
Every piece was like that, except for their faces and hands. Um, they were just this off-white color with a very dark antiquing. It was nice, but many years ago, I asked my mom, can I, like, paint these with some more color? And she said, fine, she didn't care. Well, like I said, these are from the 1960s from my childhood. And being plaster of Paris, they've gotten kind of a little bit of chipping and a little bit of the paint coming off. Um, and I'd made, we used to go to a ceramics class and I actually made three camels. They're all different. Um, I'd made three camels to go with it because I felt like, you know, if you're going to have three wise men, they got to have their camels to get there. Um, anyway, when I moved, all of these pieces were packed up. I'd wrapped everything in bubble wrap and I'd packed them in two boxes. The boxes were not overly heavy and that's probably what saved them. Um, because being plaster Paris, they don't weigh much. So I only had one issue when I unpacked them. This particular king has a crack. You probably can't see that. But there's a little indentation there. He has a little crack running across the back and halfway across the front. Not broken, just a crack. So I filled, and part of it's within this little div divot here. So I filled it in with uh, Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's plaster of Paris, you know. It, it's not like it needs filling stuff. And it wasn't broken, just cracked. So I did it, I don't know, two or three times with Aileen's tacky glue. It soaked in. Um, and now I'm putting base coats on. And that's what you're seeing here. The colors are not real bright. Some of them have got the old paint on them, which was some pearlized stuff there on the King's. And I've opted to go a little bit different colorations and just really update uh, the colors. Maybe a little more muted. I had some rather bright colors. I am going to use some bright colors on the camels because um, traditionally camels are, their outfits or, or their accoutrements are brightly colored. So what I'm doing is dry brushing. And I don't know that you can see um, on her. She's just got kind of a beige gown. Probably the best thing to show you would be the uh, that light is so bright. Let's turn it. Anyway, there's one of the sheep, and it's got a base coat, and then two, two to three different colors dry brushed on it. Um, this one's probably maybe a little better to see. And then I'm doing a coat of Mod Podge on top. To hopefully keep the paint from chipping in the future. Last time I painted, I didn't coat them with anything. So that's my other project. Kind of an ongoing. I do a little bit every day on it. I get a little tired of, of it. So uh, anyway. That's what I'm doing there. And most of what you're looking at um, on the people here are just base coats. I do have some pearl and I'm just using you know the, the apple barrel from plaid uh, matte finish acrylic paints from Walmart 50 cents a bottle. They do have the metallics which are nice. These are $1.97 and so far I've got gold, purple, and blue. Um, I might get a green one if they have a decent green one. They're out of silver, which I wanted. 
So I'll have to wait until they get that restocked. Um, but if you're dry brushing, you put on your base coat, which is usually your dark coat, because that's going to show all of your nooks and crannies. And then you want a very stiff brush, like for oil painting, but you want it very, very stiff. And you put a little bit of paint, and I use an old rag, and you put some on there, and you, oops, let me get this to where you can actually see what I'm doing. You put your paint on, and then you just kind of brush into it, and you don't want a whole lot on your brush. You want to go over it multiple times rather than one first coat. Um, and then you get, you can do, like with the, with this, you do layers. He's got brown, beige, and gray um, on this donkey. And I think he's, he's probably my favorite so far as far as colorations and how he turned out. I, I really like how he turned out. Um... So that's what I'm I'm kind of working on a little at a time and the quilt and that's it and I'm going to stop it here or YouTube is going to shut me off. So I'll get this put up in a minute and thanks for joining me for a little fun. <laughs>